Um, hello guys, today we're going to continue with June 2019 2H. Uh, so this is the first question. It says the table shows information about the heights in centimeter of 48 sunflowers in a garden. Work out an estimate for the mean. So if I want to compute the mean, I shall multiply the frequency. Um, I shall multiply the frequency by the mid value. So I shall multiply this one by the mid value of this interval. This one by the mid value of this interval. So I'll end up with 760, 1260, 1725, 1250, 405, and then I will add them. I'll end up with 5400 divided by 48. The frequency I'll end up with 112.5. So for the other question, it says um, use the compass and rule to construct a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to st stop here with my compass, with the tip of my compass. I'm going to open my compass more than half of the E. Then I will take this arc, this is the first arc, and then this is the second arc while stopping at D. Then I'll move to E with the same opening and I will do another arc. This is the arc at E, and this is the arc at E. This one is D and this one is E. And then I'll join the two arcs. Okay. So here it says explain why A intersection B is phi because no common elements between A and B. It says write uh, down two possible values of X. So I know that X is from the universal set but does not belong to A union B. So this is A union B. So the elements that are still in the universal set but do not belong to A union B is 1 or 9. Um, Now it says uh, set C is a set such that A uh, union B union C is a universal set. So basically, it's all the universal set, which is what's shown here. This is the universal set. It says A intersection C is 2. So I know that A has 2. And B intersection C complement is 4, 6, and 8. So I know that um, 1 is not intersecting B, so it's in C because it's in A union C, so now I have 1, and I know 8 and 9 because uh, B intersection C complement, uh, everything in C but inter outside of C but intersects with B is the following, this one misses 8 and 9, therefore I have 1, 2, 8, 9, which is the set C. Okay, now it says a cylinder uh, the following diameter and the following height work out the volume of the cylinder. The volume is pi r squared h, r is uh, 14 divided 2 is equal to 7, h is 20, so it's pi 7 squared times 20, I'll end up with 380, 3080. Uh, so for the next question, So it says Joshua buys uh, sells buys and sells books for a living. He buys one twenty books for four. So he bought the one twenty book books for a total of four hundred eighty. Then he sells half of the books for five. Sixty out of these books are sold for five, uh, each for five. So the sixty books are sold for three hundred. Forty percent, which is forty eight, are sold for seven. Forty eight times seven is three hundred thirty six. And then the rest of the books are sold for 8. 12 times 8 is 96. So the total, this total is going to be 732. AC is 732 and the original is 480. He says work out the percentage profit. The percentage profit is 100 times 252 divided 480. It's 52.5%. It says one book that Josh owns has a value of $15 on May uh, 2019. The value of this book has increased by 20% in the last year. Find the value on 1st of May 2018. So my original is 100, increases 20, AC is 120. 15 is my after change because it's the new date and this one is the old date. So it's going to 15 by 10 divided by 120. I'll end up with 12.5 pounds. Let's check the other one. I'm told that these triangles, two triangles, are mathematically similar. So I know that they are almost similar to each other. I want to get the length of DF. So I'm going to write the ratio 6 to 15. It's basically 2 to 5 in its simplest form. 
If I want df, I'll put 4.2 under the 2, then I will cross multiply 4.2 times 5 divided by 2, I'll end up with 10.5. Now I want to compute the lengths of BC. So if I would like to compute the lengths of BC, I'll write my ratio 2 to 5, and then I'll put EF 19.500, then I'll cross multiply 19.5 times 2 divided 5, I'll end up by 7.8, or 7.8. So now it says 30 students in a mathematical in a class, 30 students in a class sat a mathematics test. The mean mark for the test for the 30 students were 26.8. So if I want to get the total marks, I'll multiply 30 by the mean. I'll have 804. Then it says 13 out of the 30 students of the class are boys and they have a mean of 25. So if I want to get the total marks of the boys, I'll do 13 times 25, I'll end with 325. If I want to find the mean marks of the girls, I'll subtract these two, 804 minus 325, I'll end with 479, divided by the number of girls, it will give 28.2. Now, uh, it says change the speed of x kilometers per hour into meters per second, so I multiply the kilometers into meters by 1000 and divide um, and change the hours to seconds, so I'll multiply by 3600, so it's gonna be 5 over 18x. Uh, if I'm asked to solve this one simultaneously, I'll multiply this one by 2, so I'll have 6x minus 2y equal 32, then I will add these 2, x plus x is 7x plus 2y minus 2y, it's gonna cancel 32 minus 0 0.5, it's gonna be 31.5, so I'll end up with x equal 4.5. I'll have 4.5 plus 2y is equal negative 0.5. This one will go to the other side, so I'll have 5 equal 2y. So y is basically 2.5, or 5 over 2. And I'll end up with x equal 4.5 and y equal 2.5. So let's solve question 10. It says uh, the straight line has a gradient uh, of 5 and passes... 0 and negative 3 so I can write the equation directly 5x minus 3 because this one is the gradient this one is the y-intercept because the x-coordinate is equal to 0 okay so now it says the following the shaded region is bounded by four straight lines write down the quantities that define r is basically from 0 till 2 and from 1 to 3 so x is greater than or equal 0 and less than or equal 2 and 1 is greater than or equal uh, y is greater than or equal 1 and less than or equal 3 okay so it says the table gives the average crowd attendance per match for each of the five uh, football clubs for one season find the difference between the average uh, attendance for barcelona and the average crowd attendance for monaco so i'm going to subtract this one minus this one I'm going to end up with 6.7475 uh, times 10 power 4. Antonio says the average crowd attendance for Chelsea is 50 times the Oxford United. It's false because it's not 50 times or even 10 times. Uh, during the last season, the cost of, the tech, uh, of a ticket to watch Cipron uh, United increased by 15% and then decreased by 8%. Work out the overall percentage increase in the cost. So first of all, it increased by 15%. Now, this 115 decreased by 8%. It's not that I'm going to subtract 8%. So if I'm going to assume 100 is my original, 8 is a percentage change, and 92. If I want to take 8% out of the 115, I'm going to multiply 115 by 92 divided by 100. I'm going to get 105.8. So be careful. 115, um, I'm not going to subtract from 8.8. 8. I'm going to just decrease it by 8% by doing OPCAC. So here it says ABCD is a trapezium and I would like to compute the perimeter. So the perimeter, I'm gonna basically split it into a rectangle. This one is 16.7. If I want to get the hypotenuse, it's basically sine 43 is equal to 16.7 over H. So H is basically 16.7 over sine 43. And uh, if I wanna get this one, it's 10, 1043 is opposite over adjacent. So if I want to compute the adjacent, 16.7 over 1043. So I'm going to add 21.2 times 2, because it's repeated 2 times, plus 16.7, uh, plus 16.7 divided 1043. 
plus 16.7 divided sine 43. All of this will give me 1, 1. Uh, let's go to question 13. It's so a cumulative frequency. So if I want to complete, to complete the table, I'll write 7. 7 plus 10 is 17. 17 plus 12 is 29. Uh, 29 plus 19 is 48. 48 plus 18 is 66. 66 plus 14 is 88. Okay, um, I'm asked to plot uh, this graph. I plot it here. And then I join them. I'm asked to find the median. The median is basically half times the total. Half times the total. And half times the total is equal to 40. 40 is basically... 40 is basically... Uh, Half times 80 is 40, so I'm gonna come here on the 40 on the y-axis till I hit the curve, then I read the value. It's basically um, 17, uh, it's almost 17. No, it's not 17, it's 16.5, um, I think. Yeah, it's 16.5. Fifteen. No, it's seventeen point. Sorry, it's um. It's eighteen. Okay, if I want to compute the upper quartile, uh, I shall get the higher, uh, the upper quartile and the lower quartile. If I want to compute the upper quartile range, so three over four times eighty gives me sixty. So sixty, and I go down. So I have twenty two point five, twenty three, twenty three point five. 1 over 4 times 80 is 20, 20 till I hit this one, so it's going to be 10.5 and 11. And then I'm going to subtract them, I'm going to end up with 12.5. Um, minutes. So let's solve this question, it says here vector question. I want to find the magnitude of AC, I know that going from A to B, this is A to B, and then this is going from C to B. Now, if I want to go from A to C, I basically have to go AB minus CB. So it's going to be 6 minus 9 minus this one. 6 minus 1 is 5, minus 9 minus 3 is minus 12. So I'm going to do the square root. Uh, if I want the magnitude of the 5 squared plus negative 12 squared, this is equal 13. Um, for question 15, I'm asked to make x the subject of the formula. So, in order to do, sorry, in order to do the subject of the formula, I have first to square the y and square the side to remove the square root. So I have y squared over 1 is equal 3x minus 2 over, uh, over x plus 1. So now what shall I do? I shall do like cross multiplication how do i now i i shall do a cross multiplication i have y squared x plus y is equal 3x minus 2 i'll put the x's on one side and everything that does not have an x on the other side so i have y squared x minus 3x so i'll have x bracket y squared minus 3 uh minus y squared minus 2 so x is equal to basically minus y squared minus 2 divided y squared by 2 this is how I made x subject. It says show the following. So this is basically a rationalization problem. I have to multiply by the conjugate, which is the same as this number, but with different sign in between. Instead of minus plus, up and down, I'll end up with the square root of the first number minus square root of the second number. So square root, uh, I'll end up with the square of the first number minus the square of the second number. So square root 2 power of 2 is going to give me 2. 2 minus 1 is going to be 1. I'll multiply 4 by 2. It's going to be 4 root 2 plus 4. Root 8 times root 2 is root 16 plus root 8. So 4 root 2 plus root 8 is basically 4 root 2 plus 2 root 8 uh, plus 2 root 2. Plus square root 16 is 4 plus 4. So it's going to be um, 6 root 2 because 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 root 2 plus 8 because I have 4 plus 4 is equal 8. So for question 17, it says y is directly proportional uh, to the cube of x. So basically I'll write y is proportional to x cubic. 
and then y equal kx cubic it says um y is equal 20h when x is equal h so 20h is equal kh cubic i'm gonna get k by dividing 20h over h cubic k is gonna be 20 over h squared um so now this is my final equation y equal 20 over h squared multiplied by x cubic it says find for, for b it says find in terms of x uh, fi find x in terms of h when y is equal 67.5 h so i have y is equal 67.5 h 20 over h squared x cubic so i'll multiply by h squared and divide by 20 i'll end up with 3.375 h cubic to get a x i'll get 3.375 h cubic part of 3 part of 1 over 3 sorry i'll end up with 1.5 h uh, so let's continue to 18. So basically it says the diagram shows a solid cuboid. The total surface area is A. Find the maximum. So if it says the maximum, I should do first Y dash. So to compute the area, this one and this one is X by X times 2. So I have 2X squared. And this one is um, 12 minus 3X times X multiplied by 4 multiplied by 4 so i have 2x squared plus 4 12x minus 3x i'll expand i'll end up with 2x squared plus 48x minus 12x squared so 48x minus 10x squared is equal a now i want to do da by dx it's going to be 48 minus 20x is equal to 0 so i'll solve for x x is 2.4 then i'm going to plug x in the expression for the area again so i'll have 48 multiplied by 2.4 Minus 10 times 2.4 squared, I will end up with 57.6. This is my maximum area of this cuboid. So I have ABCD. Uh, I'm given ABCD is a quadrilateral. It says the area of ACD is 250 centimeters squared. And it wants to calculate the area of the quadrilateral. So if I want to compute the area of this one, this is a triangle. So I know that this is 38 because the sum of angles is 180. I'm going to get B. Basically, I'm given that 250 is equal to half B times 26 times 39. I'm going to get the value of B like this. And I'm going to write it exact. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the value of C using the sine rule. So I'm going to say B over sine 95, which is the opposite angle, is equal to C over sine 38. And then I'm going to do cross multiplication. So sine 30.557994774 79 times sine 38 divided by sine 95. I'll end up by, the, by this number. So if I want to complete the total area, I'll do 250 plus half uh, B times C sine 47. This is B. 30.55 times 18.88 times sine 47. So I'll end up with 461. Now, uh, let's go to 20. So 20 basically says there's a line. This is the following line. And this is the equation of the curve. And it says that they intersect in two points. So if I want to get the coordinates, I'll basically replace y here with this value. So I said x squared minus 3x. And I replaced y with 9 minus x. Plus 2, I replaced the y, 9 minus x squared. And then I expanded. After I expand, I got x squared minus 27x plus 3x squared plus 162 minus 36x plus 2x squared. So I ended up with 6x squared minus 63x plus 162. Now I will simplify further by divided by, th by 3. I will end up with the following and I will solve the following equation. I'll end up with 2x minus 9 and x minus 6 equals 0. So either x is equal 9 over 2 or x is equal 6. Now, I'll plug 6 in the linear equation, so I'll have 9 minus 6, I'll end up by 3. And I'll plug 9 minus 9 over 2, I'll end up with 9 over 2. I'll end up with y equal 9 over 2. Okay, um, so number 21, question 21, is basically a cuboid. I have uh, the length of AB is 4. The length of BC is 2, CF is 3, and I want to compute the angle between AF and AC. So I'm going to draw AF like this one. I'm going to go down from F to the base where I have a 
uh, when I have 90 degrees, and this is occurs at point C. So now I need to compute AC because I have FC3. In order to compute AC, I'll draw my base, which is AD CB. AB is 4, CD, CB is 2. Now I need to compute AC. I can compute it using Pythagoras. It's a square root 4 squared plus 2 squared. So basically it's square root 16 plus 4. It's going to be square root 20. So if I want this angle, this is opposite and this is adjacent. So tan inverse 3 over root 20 is going to be 33.9. Okay. So let's go to question 20. It says simplify. Um, I'm going to take x as a common factor. I will end up with uh, 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. I'm going to do mod 5, 3. I'll end with the following 3x minus 1, 2x plus 5. And here I'll have 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. Then I'm going to remove this, uh, simplify this one with this one. I'll end up with x, 3x minus 1 over 2x minus 5. Okay. Um... So this is a probability question. Okay. So it says Boris has a bag which contains uh, red and green sweets. Boris takes two at random from the bag. The probability that Boris takes exactly one red sweet from the bag is the following. And then it says originally there were three red sweets. Where is the probability? Uh, how many greens? So I'm going to get the probability of getting exactly red sweets. So the probability of getting red sweets is 3 over x, where x is my total. And then multiplied by the green sweets, the probability of getting green sweets is x minus 3, because I have the total is x. I remove 3 from it, which is the number of reds. I get the green. Times x minus y, 1. Why x minus 1? Because uh, I reduced the quantities by one. I took one red already. And I will do the same thing for the probability of green over red. It's x over x minus three over x times three over x minus one. I'm gonna add these two probabilities and I'm gonna end up with six x minus three over x minus one. And this should be equal to the probability of getting one green. Now I'll cross multiply. I will end up with 12 x squared minus 12 x is equal to 210 x plus uh, 630. So when I rearrange, I'll end up with 12x squared minus 222x plus 630 is equal to 0. Now if I'm, I'm going to solve um, this one using uh, my calculator, I'll end up with 15, x is equal 15, and x equal 3.5. Of course, I cannot have 3.5 sweets, so this one is rejected. So I have a total of 15. If I want to get the number of greens, I shall 15 minus 3, this gives me 12. Uh, so the final problem, it says the function f of x is the following. Find f of 5. I'll remove x and I'll put 5. 3 times 5 minus 2 is going to be 13. Uh, the other one, I want the f inverse, g inverse. I cannot do g inverse before completing the square. So I basically took 2 as a common factor. I'll end up with x squared minus 10x plus 9 over 2. Uh, I'll complete the square using the following rule. So I put b as um, 10 divided 2, it's going to give me 5 minus minus 10 divided 2 squared plus 9 over 2, I'll end up with 2, bracket x minus 5 all squared minus 41 over 2, I'll multiply the 2 by this term and this term, I'll end up with 2x minus 5 squared minus 41, and then I'm going to make x subject, how do I make x subject? The 41 will go here, so it's going to be y plus 41 divided 2, I'll end up with x minus 5 all squared. I'll take the square root of this one. It's going to be, uh, uh, I'll end up with y plus 41 over 2 equal x minus 5. So 5 will go to the other side. So y plus 41 over 2 under the square root plus 5 is equal to x. I'm going to replace y with x and x with g inverse of x. Okay. Um, uh, now we are done with June 2019 2H, so good luck.